Um, I'm now going to recognize myself. Um, Mr. Sopko, let's go to 60,000 feet here for a second. Give, it, give us the, the big numbers and dollars spent. And I want our colleagues and everybody to understand the numbers that we're going to talk about here to have nothing to do with the war fight. Okay? They don't have anything to do with our, our fighting, the men and women, feeding them, housing them, tanks, airplanes, whatever it else we need to fight the war. This is the construction part of the aid that we're giving them. How much money have we spent in just Afghanistan? It's north of $100 billion, is it not? Yes, Mr. Chairman. It, it's actually $113 billion. So of the $113 billion um, that has been spent, how much of it has been appropriated but not yet allocated or not yet spent? Uh, we have approximately, uh, let me get that figure. I think it's uh, 11.45 billion in the pipeline uh, as of the end of 2015. So 11 billion is in the pipeline. So 11 billion in the pipeline to, to the three representatives from the Department of Defense. How much is enough? How much more money does it take from the United States taxpayers, from, from the men and women who actually do the jobs and make the money and pay their taxes, how much more money do we have to pour into Afghanistan for just the reconstruction? Or is this just going to go on in perpetuity with no end? How much more do you need? Sir, I think we are uh, around a steady state amount of about $3.4, $3.5 billion. That might go up given some Afghans. So if you have $4 billion more dollars, you're going to be fine. In the next year, sir, the cost to sustain the Afghan National Security Forces is about $3.4, $3.5 billion Annually. a year. Yes, sir. That's just to continue to stand up the Afghan government. And that, would, and that would come from this fund, is what you want? That's right, sir. So yesterday and tomorrow, we're having hearing about Flint and water. I just don't understand how we pour $100 billion into Afghanistan, and we got people who can't turn on a faucet in Michigan and drink the water. And so we're in tough financial straits in our own country. We're 19 trillion, trillion dollars in debt. And it sounds to me like we've got some $7 billion that's sitting on the sidelines. It's already been appropriated. This is not new money. It's already been set aside that you don't need next year, correct? Is that accurate? If you have $11 billion that's been appropriated but not yet allocated and you need less than $4 billion a year to stand up the Afghan government, what are you doing with the other $8 billion? Sir, that, that is total appropriation. The, the part that is for DOD is the $3.5 billion. The, the $11 billion is total U.S. government, and that is state the, aid and other agencies. Chairman, the 3.45 is just supporting the Afghan military and police. You still got to pay for the rest of the Afghan government, okay? The teachers, the health clinics, the roads, and everything else. How much does that cost? Well, as I said before, that's about eight to ten billion total. Subtract out the five billion, four billion for the police. So we're talking about six billion. So help me with the, with the math here. What is the annual expenditure the American government needs to spend in Afghanistan, or that they, the military and, and the State Department, and everybody else wants to spend? Every year. I'd go back to... This is just the reconstruction, no fighting. Reconstruction. I'd go back to the figure I told you. The Afghans raise about $2 billion in legal taxes. Legal right. taxes. They do illegally tax our contractors, but let's just say legal taxes. It costs about 4 to $5 billion for the military. So we got a $3 billion delta. Yeah. And then another 3 to $4 billion above that. So it's a $7 billion that somebody has to pay. Up to now, it's the U.S. taxpayers and the coalition. Per what, year. Per year, I'm talking about. What, and what percentage is the United States paying versus the rest of the world? Sir, for the Afghan National Security Forces, we're talking about a billion from the rest of the world. Um, the development aid, I think uh, I would need to check with state, but I think they're shooting for an, a billion as well. So, sorry, Mr. Sopko, help me get the, the top line number here. How much money are we putting in and how much is the rest of the world putting in? DOD plus 
State Department, USID, all that. It sounds like the rest of our coalition is giving about two billion, and we're picking up the other six to seven billion. Exactly. And how much is there any extra money just floating around? Because Mr. Sopko, last time we talked about it was nearly twenty billion dollars. We, we were doing we were doing more projects in Afghanistan than we ever were in the history of Afghanistan. Correct. Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, actually, the amount of money we're spending on reconstruction in Afghanistan is more we're paying in, for in reconstruction in any other country in the United States. And I think in, in, we've ever done anywhere. I mean, it's more than we spent on the entire Marshall Plan uh, for Europe after the war. Sir, so $60 billion total in terms of ASIF, the, the fund that um, supports the Afghan National Security and Defense Forces, there, at, a, at its height, it was at about uh, $10 billion a year appropriation. We have worked very hard, as our mission has changed, to move away from building up the ANDSF and the costly experiences associated with that and getting it to a, a better steady state level at the $3.5 billion rate that we are currently at. We, as, as a means of increasing the um, efficiency of our investment in Afghanistan, we are looking to slope that cost of the force down. Security costs are very high, both for the Afghan government and for ourselves. And so one of the keys here is reducing violence levels in Afghanistan in a, in a reasonable amount of time. And the ANDSF is going to- Well, we've been at it for that. 14 years, so where are we at? The Afghan government has been in full lead for responsibility, full lead for security responsibility over the last year. They had mixed success, but there was success, and they are. We expect them to continue to develop. You and can't improve. drive. You can't drive from the embassy from the airport to the embassy. I've I've driven that. It's not a long distance, but you can't do that today. So, are you telling me it's more secure or less secure? The international presence um, is certainly under threat in Afghanistan. Yeah, it's that less is secure. What we're trying to do. To protect ourselves. I, with indulgence here from the rest of the committee, I have a couple other questions. How, uh, you know what, let me go back. I'll, I'll have to ask a second round. Um, but let me ask one other <laughs> really quick question. How many people do we have in Afghanistan? I want to know how many, how many DOD personnel and contractors do we have there? Not just so-called boots on the ground, but I think this boots on the ground is a facade because really, when you go and you hire thousands or hundreds, I don't know what the number is, of contractors, I don't know how those aren't human beings as well. How many people does the Department of Defense have on the ground in Afghanistan? Sir, I'll have to get back to you on the full number, but you're right. Our contractor to boots on the ground ratio is high. I think it's at about four to one, but I'll have to confirm that for the re and get it back to you for the record. If so, you got a lot of staff sitting behind you. So if somebody could work on that number before the end of this hearing, that would be really helpful. Mr. Chairman, I, I think I can give that number to you. Sure. Our, our best guesstimate, uh, and again, it changes every day, is 39,609 total contractors. It's not just for DOD, it's also for aid and state. Uh, 14,222 approximately uh, are U.S. citizens, or 36 percent. So we got about... 40,000 contractors. And how many employees, or whether they be military, USAID, State Department? I'll have to get back to that. <laughs> All right, you, a lot of staff back there. We're working on Bust that. out those smartphones. We're going to come up with this number before we leave this hearing. Now let's recognize the gentlewoman from Illinois, Ms. Kelly, for five minutes.